Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. One of the debate that rages on the internet is whether or not you have the right to film police officers while they're doing their work. So you're walking down the street and you see a police officer and you're standing on a public sidewalk, for instance. Police officer is at the side of the road, for instance, conducting a traffic stop. Can you pull out a camera and start filming them? And that debate is a hotly contested one on the internet and elsewhere, especially on YouTube, because you'll find people who do this, um, is what they do. They go out and they, and they film police interactions. So interestingly, the Supreme Court was recently asked, can you please weigh in on this and let us know if there is a First Amendment protected right to film the police when they're doing their jobs in public, okay? And they declined to address the question. And so for the people out there who say, I've got the right to do this, that statement is an opinion. And if you say the Supreme Court has said, I've got the right to do this, that is a false statement because they declined to hear the case that asked this question. The Supreme Court declines to determine if you have a First Amendment right to film the police. This is from Reason.com. Billy Binion wrote the story. Denver cops received qualified immunity, another hot topic, after performing a warrantless search of a man's tablet and trying to delete a video he took of them beating a suspect. So you can see why there might be, for instance, a newsworthy aspect to what this man was filming. The Supreme Court refused to hear the case, which addresses that intersection of police abuse and the First Amendment, declining to consider a petition from a man who says his free speech rights were violated when police officers searched his tablet without a warrant and then attempted to delete a video he took of them beating a suspect. Officers with the Denver Police Department cornered the man in the summer of 2014 after they saw him recording an altercation just moments earlier. The video he recorded showed a police officer punching a suspect in the face six times while executing an arrest over an alleged drug deal. The man had a sock in his mouth that the cops thought was contraband, and it captured a different officer throwing a woman to the ground by her ankle when she approached the scene screaming. When they noticed the man filming, one of the police officers shouted, Camera! And the group proceeded to harass him for the footage. He says the police implied they would jail him if he refused to produce the clip. Well, we could do this the easy way or we could do this the hard way. Famous phrases often said by police. Uh, An officer reportedly said that pointing to his squad car, which we're guessing would be the hard way. Despite the man's protests, the police then confiscated the tablet and went through it without his permission. Those officers were given qualified immunity in response to all of this, and that, of course, is the doctrine that allows them to infringe on your rights if the way they went about doing so has not specifically been ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in this or, or the federal circuit court that you're in. So, in other words, this man had to go find a case where the courts have said it is unlawful to take a man's tablet from him in an attempt to delete the footage thereon of the police beating a suspect. Or something like that. Uh, This standard, of course, has seen government officials get off for assaulting and arresting a man for standing outside of his own home, for shooting and killing a man who'd been sleeping in his car, for beating a man after pulling him over for broken taillights, uh, for wrecking an innocent man's home after conducting a SWAT raid on the wrong house, and for stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from a crime scene. Uh, Without a prior ruling with identical facts, the victims in those above cases uh, were not allowed to file lawsuits against those officers and see the lawsuits get to the light of day. That standard, of course, is particularly egregious here because the Denver Police Department has a policy that they've had since 2007, which tells officers that the public has a constitutional right to film them on duty. So the Denver Police Department told their officers, people have the right to film you in public. Deal with it. These officers then tried to grab this man's tablet and tried to delete the video off of it. And when this guy comes from and goes, that's wrong, they go, we didn't know it was wrong. There's never been an opinion in this circuit that says that, even though their own department rules say it. So 
it's a topsy-turvy set of uh, standards here. Uh, according to the U.S. Court of Appeals, the Tenth Circuit, which ruled in March that the only permissible avenue for overcoming qualified immunity is to find the perfect court precedent, and they said they could not find one here. Again, despite Denver's own police department having a rule that says people are allowed to film you, get over it. Judge Jerome Holmes of the U.S. Court of Appeals, the Tenth Circuit, wrote, Judicial decisions are the only valid interpretive source of the content of clearly established law. Whatever training the officers received concerning the First Amendment was irrelevant to this inquiry. The rationale for qualified immunity is that officials should be free from vacuous lawsuits and thus deserve to be put on notice as to what is and is not constitutional behavior. And I agree on the basic premise that you can't sue a police officer for doing their job. I've heard of people who get pulled over by a police officer and, and, and the person says, if you write me a ticket, I'm going to sue you. Well, that's stupid, okay? But when the police officer does something wrong and harms you, and, and it's clearly wrong, it makes sense that you should be able to go after that. Now, what's clearly wrong versus clearly established case law, um, that, that standard's too high. At least the courts are making it too high. From the Tenth Circuit's opinion, it's clear that obscure court precedents are more valuable at accomplishing that end than a department's own stated policies, even though one would expect most government employees to be more familiar with their own policies than with the established case law of their appellate court circuit. So I'm in Michigan. Go find a Michigan State trooper and say, hey, do you follow the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals opinions closely to find out what you can and cannot do? And they'd probably go, six what now? So those training guidelines will now somewhat lose their force, says Anya Bidwell, who is an attorney for the Institute for Justice. Cops have less reason to follow department policies because they know the federal courts will decline to hold them accountable for breaking those very rules. Now, the Denver Police Department could, if it wanted to, punish the cops for breaking department policy. But we know how that goes. What's particularly stunning here is that the people who wrote the training were able to correctly synthesize the law and conclude that the officer's actions violated a constitutional right. Now, that's a guy from the Free Speech Council at Tech Freedom, uh, an advocacy group focused on the intersection of technology and the First Amendment. To rule that qualified immunity protects them, even though the department correctly pieced together the clearly established law to train them that such conduct is unlawful, simply because a court hadn't ruled on that yet, is extreme judicial hubris. So, in case you're curious, the odd circuits have ruled, that is the 1st, the 3rd, the 5th, the 7th, the ninth, and the 11th, they've all acknowledged a First Amendment right to film the police. Had those officers misbehaved in one of those federal circuits, they would not have been so lucky. But of course, the other circuits have not ruled. And whenever I mention that, I will get some, and I can hear the keyboards being pounded right now by angry people who are going to say, but Steve, the other circuits will rule that way when it gets there. Well, here's one that got the 10th that didn't go that way. Um, but besides that, the point is that we need clearly established case law to say for certain that the law is on our side. And so as of right now, the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11th has the case law that says this. Other circuits don't. And as noted at the top, the Supreme Court just declined to take the case, even though there's obviously some confusion on this issue. So you would think that the 2nd, the 4th, the 6th, the 8th, and the 10th there being five circuits that have not ruled, and the first, the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, and the eleventh, six that have ruled, it might have been helpful of the Supreme Court to take this case. Why didn't they? We don't know. They don't have to explain why they don't take cases. And I've mentioned this before, that once in a while they get offered a case that could resolve a whole bunch of confusion, and they choose not to. So they didn't. While the Tenth Circuit acknowledged that the Denver Police Department training invoked a constitutional right to film the police, the court danced around coming to a conclusion on that subject, referring to the Tenth Circuit. 
we do not consider nor opine on whether Mr. Frazier actually had a First Amendment right to record the police performing their official duties. That leaves officers in that jurisdiction free to violate the public's rights in the same way again without fear of recourse because there's no ruling on it yet. And there never will be a ruling because it's reverse circular logic. You can only say it's there because there's a past precedent. And the past precedent can only be there if there's a prior precedent. And there's a prior precedent and it's turtles all the way down. And so since you can never have the first ruling, you can't have a precedent. So there you go. So uh, I like his use of the word opine. Of course, that's the root for the word opinion. An opinion is a noun. Opine is a verb. I like that. But getting back to the original point is that there is some confusion, as you can see, on whether or not you are allowed to film in public the police doing their jobs. And I will have angry people who will say, Steve, I can't believe you didn't just come out and say we have that right. I'm an attorney, and my job is to tell you what the law is, what the law says, and you have to understand where the law comes from. And so the supreme law of our land comes from the Constitution, and it is also as interpreted by the Supreme Court. Now, people will read the Constitution and go, I found something in the Constitution, and I believe it means this. And you can believe it means that. And there have been things in the Constitution that people believed meant something until the Supreme Court rules on it. So you can say, I believe I've got a constitutional right to do this. And you can say, the circuit court in my circuit has even ruled on it if you're in one of the correct circuits. If you're not in one of the correct circuits, then you got to kind of look at other stuff. But as of right now, the Supreme Court has decided to not rule on the issue. I wish they had. It would have solved a lot of problems. And again, I don't know what goes into which decisions they decide to take up. But as of right now, the Denver cops received qualified immunity after performing a warrantless search of a man's tablet and trying to delete a video he took of them beating a suspect. And when that case was presented to the Supreme Court, would you please rule on this? They declined to do so. So as of right now, the Supreme Court has declined to determine if you have a First Amendment right to film the police. If you're not happy with that, you can hammer away all you want on the keyboard and make comments under the video. But don't blame me because your anger would be misdirected. You should be angry at the Supreme Court who decided not to take a look at the case. This article is from Reason.com. It's from Billy Binion who wrote it. It's a great article. Fred sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Computers are being called upon to perform many new functions, including the consumption of homework formerly eaten by the dog.